Hello everyone, this is Andre Tonelli and I'm very excited today to be able to show you my new Parker guitars. Uh, these are incredible instruments, they sound great and also they have quite a few modifications and tweaks that we did to them. So that's going to be very interesting and we'll get into all the details about that. So let's check it out. Just in case you're not familiar with the Parker guitars, uh, all flies come with uh, this uh, incredible feature which is a thin coat of some uh, carbon fiber, glass, epoxy magical stuff that they put in the back of the guitar. The guitar is made of wood, in this case it's mahogany. And, but in the back you have this very thin layer of this material that makes it extremely strong, almost indestructible. And at the same time it gives the guitar uh, extreme resonance. So when you play the guitar the sustain is very, very, very good. And you also get uh, you know, a balanced tonal sound on all strings throughout the fingerboard and that's one of the key features of the, the Parker and of course it's on these guitars. So like all Parker flies this comes with uh, magnetic pickups and uh, piezo pickup which means you can mix and match them, the different sounds you can plug in a stereo cable and send the acoustic sound to an amp and the electric sound to another amp you know stuff like that and uh, the, the piezo pickup is sits right here between uh, beneath the saddles of the bridge and the great thing about this bridge is that it's incredibly uh, great for keeping in tune. So you have this, uh, it's a special spring that they use, it's not the regular spring, it's just a piece of metal and it's engineered so that it's extremely resilient and it always goes back to pitch no matter how much I abuse it and I tend to do it quite a bit. And uh, it also allows, this engineering thing allows you to have no locking nut here, which is a big thing because this way the string starts from here and it can travel all the way to the tuning peg uninterrupted and it's, uh, you know, so the whole thing vibrates when you play and it makes a big difference and if you couple it with the with the epoxy thing you get this incredible resonance and you know all frequencies are really well represented which is very important if you use clean sounds and then distorted sounds you know you want this focused and uh, and uh, complete sound coming out of the speakers and maybe my favorite feature of the guitar is the fretboard and the neck is just incredible. I mean, the shape of the neck and the profile is amazing. It's not too thin because I'm not a big fan of really thin necks. I want to be able to feel the, you know, when I catch the string, especially with vibratos and, and bends. But at the same time, it's extremely comfortable. And uh, a great feature is that it's not made of wood. It's actually made of the same composite as the back of the guitar. And this has several advantages. First of all, it's uh, unbreakable, or almost. I'm not going to try to break it, but it's going to be very difficult to do it by accident. And also, it's, uh, when, when you use wood, sometimes wood uh, tends to absorb you know, uh, sweat and humidity and dirt. And that has an effect on the strings. Even when you're not playing, the guitar sits there and there's an, an exchange of you know, humidity between the strings and the wood. So the, the lifespan of the strings is greatly enhanced with this neck. And the other great thing is that it uses stainless steel, hardened stainless steel uh, frets. So they will never wear out no matter how long you've had it. I played Parker's from 95 or 96 and the frets are just immaculate. And um, so that's another great feature. And the other great thing is that it just engineers so well that it always stays in tune. You know, the strings, the intonation is just perfect. So once you set it once, it sounds perfect on all strings and you never have to change it. Again. So these two guitars are based on the Fly Mojo. That means they are uh, made of mahogany, neck and body. And even though they're the same, I, I do feel a little difference when I play them because maybe they respond different to a certain pedal or to a different amp, and it's very subtle. But it brings me to an interesting point about these guitars, is that they look so futuristic and engineered that you might think they're all made by machines. And actually, there's a lot of work that's done by hand at the shop. And so I think that human element kind of transpires to, to the sound and the playability of them. And so the main difference really between this guitar and that one is the paint job, which I'm going to spend just a minute on, because this is an incredible work, which is, uh, it's called Solar Flare, and it's a pretty rare color, and uh, depending on how the light hits it, it has little holographic particles that light up in different uh, shades of color. And you know, it's really cool because it it's like staring at the center of a galaxy, and you never quite see the same guitar twice. That's the way I like to think of it. And this one is called the Ice Blue Burst, and it's an incredible, incredible work of art, and we're going to have a close-up of it later. But uh, there's a little backstory about this. When I asked the Parker uh, Custom Shop if I could have one in this pattern, I was actually told that they didn't have any of that paint left. 
And then a couple of days later, I got a call saying that, okay, well, we can make one more. So I think this is actually gonna be the final and last Ice Blue Burst party guitar that we'll ever make. Party guitars are actually the most incredible feats of engineering that I've ever played, so they are quite perfect as they are. But the great thing about becoming a Parker artist was that I had access to uh, the people that make them and uh, we could maybe tweak a few things to make them even more perfect, if that's even a sentence. So the first big, big difference between these models and uh, the regular Parker Mojo is uh, in the pickup configuration. So as we said earlier, you can actually mix and match acoustic and electric with the regular flies. And there is a problem with it, which of course is a big advantage for many things, but this, for, for somebody who plays um, instrumental music, so I have to be responsible for all the rhythm guitars and for all the lead guitars, and in a concert especially, you're kind of switching back and forth. So you, you really need all the, the response you can get from the strings and from the pickups. And so you get to know your pickups very well, and you get to know your amp very well. And you really don't want anything else to stand in the way. So the way they're usually wired is you have the magnetic pickup, and then the signal from the magnetic pickup travels to the the piezo pickup which is an active circuit and even though it's very transparent you still you can still feel maybe not so much in the sound but you can feel it in the feel of the guitar and the response of the strings and that was something that I, I'm kind of uncomfortable for my signal to travel more than strictly necessary and so what, what we did is actually separate the two circuits <clears throat> so one great advantage of it is I don't even have a battery in right now and I can still play the guitar and it plays perfect of course just the electric part but if I want the acoustic sounds, which sounds incredible, so I, I didn't want to lose that, all I have to do is either plug the cable just, it's a stereo jack, so I can just plug it into the first slot, or I can just use the, the stereo cable that comes with every part of the guitar, and I can just then send the electric signal to one amp, and the acoustic signal to either a preamp, or an acoustic amp, or to the front of the house. So <clears throat> it's a bit of a compromise maybe in, in functionality, but I can still retain all sounds, and it works very good for me, especially in a live situation. And if you ever run out, if the battery ever runs out and you're on stage, then it doesn't matter because the electric guitar keeps working. Another very small feature, actually, it's uh, physically incredibly small, like this, but it makes a, quite a big difference in sound, is that I added a high-pass filter on the pickups. So what happens is usually when you lower the volume of the guitar and you're playing, for example, you're playing a clean with a clean sound, or even distorted sound, when you lower the volume, you don't really lose that much volume, all right? So between the, top, the, the open position, I can lower the volume, but the volume itself is not really affected until I go way lower on the, on the, on the pot. Now I can hear a change in volume, and then I look how close I am to, to zero. Okay, so, and it, this inherent in every guitar you'll ever play. When you play with the volume pot, it cleans up the sound, but it also lowers uh, the response of the high frequencies. So you lose high frequencies when you lower volumes. And that's, uh, that's cool, I mean, I use that. And because all guitar players, we're kind of used to that response, so we can use it to clean up a sound, but also to change the equalization of the sound, to change the response of the amp. But uh, sometimes when I play especially clean sounds, or maybe if I'm playing with a wah pedal, and I don't want the, the guitar full on with the volume, I like to lower my volume and not lose the high end. And so the way we've done it is add a push-pull knob here and this activates a high pass filter which retains the high frequencies as I lower the volume so if I'm playing I can lower the volume and the sound is exactly the same now I can lose my volume without losing the, the high frequencies which is very useful especially if you play uh, with the distorted amp and you use the volume to clean it up that way you can have sparkly cleans even with low volume This one here is uh, kind of a different beast, it's more of a standard uh, fly, it doesn't have all the mods as the other ones, but it's a beautiful custom pearl yellow color and again an incredible, really incredible job by the shop, it's flawless. And it looks kind of a mix between, I don't know, uh, staring at the sun and an old Gibson gold top or something like that. And it's uh, really beautiful and it's different, it's very important for me to have it because it's very different from the other ones. The main difference is that it's made of different woods, it's made of uh, base wood for the neck and poplar for the body, which is very light. It's so light actually that you can lift it up and take off the strap and you'll, hear a, you'll feel a, a change in weight. It's incredibly light. 
And uh, so this lightness also gives it a different response to certain frequencies. So it's a bit more mid-rangey and crunchy. But uh, the great thing about it is for clean sounds, it's incredible. And sometimes for distortion, it works very well to cut through a mix. All right? so, or, or maybe even live, if you have a song that's more busy on certain uh, ranges, or if you work with a singer. So this really helps you cut through because it has this spike in the mid-range. It's really beautiful sound, especially clean. And um, it's, it has a few things. Uh, the main thing here is that I did the modifications. I like to dabble in electronics some, somehow. And so I modified also this one to have the separate circuits between electric and acoustic. And a cool thing is the pickups. The pickups are Seymour Duncans. By the way, the Mojos uh, usually come with Seymour Duncans. But these two models are made with DiMarzio. All right? so, and these Seymour Duncans are actually custom made by Seymour Duncan. So they, they match the old pickups that they were used on, on the flies. So it's really cool. It's not a regular uh, Seymour Duncan. It's made especially for, uh, for Parker guitars. And uh, this one doesn't have the, the, the high pass filter also because it's already a bright guitar. So it's actually useful to be able to roll off the high end. And that's pretty much it. Really, there's not that much of a difference between this and any standard deluxe. And beautiful guitar. Alright, so before we go, I would like to give you a little bit of advice, maybe, if, uh, or a little tip, maybe, even better. Which is, uh, I don't know if you noticed, it's almost impossible to see, but we'll have a close-up uh, with a picture-in-picture picture if we can. I, I put a little sheet of plastic here, a very small one, to protect the finish from my, my fingernails and my, my fingers when I play. And all my guitars, my older guitars, they all have no paint left here. You know, just, you play so many hours and thousands of times back and forth, and the paint wears out. And I would really hate it to happen to these guitars. You know, if, if they have to be scratched up, it better be something worth it. Like you drop it on stage or, or you bump it to a big amp or something. And not something as simple as this. So, um, I, a little trick I came up with is to actually go and buy a cheap iPad cover or an iPhone. But usually you, you, you need more surface. So, an iPad one is great. So you buy the iPad cover, you know the ones that you use to protect the screen, and the great thing about them, they're designed to be as transparent as possible. So they're almost invisible. And I'm sure most of you didn't even see them while I was making the video. And uh, all you have to do is kind of cut them into the right shape. And they don't use glue, they use silicone, so you can always take them out. I used to do it with um, you know, the luthier plastic they use for flamenco guitars. And once you put that in there, that's it. You're never going to take it out because this, the glue is very strong. So this is a way better option, an iPad cover, and uh, well, I hope it's useful for you. I'll never forget the first time I saw a Parker guitar. I was maybe 14 or 15, and I went to the local music store in Milan, and they had this incredible uh, metallic green Parker fly just sitting there. And so my friends and I would just went up to it, and we were just staring at it for like 20 minutes and drooling. And I think the people that worked there weren't very happy about it, and they didn't really trust us close to it and not even to look at it. It was a kind of a spinal tap moment there. And actually the following week I went back and the guitar was hanging on the top rack of the store, so way out of reach of my little sweaty teenage hands. And uh, so now it's really incredible for me to be able to sit here and talk to you about these guitars and the way they were made and the modifications that were made to make them perfect for the stuff I play and the music I make. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if I can urge you to just go out there and try one out, this is gonna be an incredible experience for any guitar player. Thanks very much again for watching. See ya.